So let's take a few minutes to discuss this upcoming chapter. The title of the chapter is Introduction to Inversion of Control and Dependency Injection. Now, we make no assumptions that you've previously experienced or have any knowledge of these two principles. So, the main goal of this lesson is to build a foundation for you in these two concepts. At its roots, the Spring Framework is an inversion of control container or a dependency injection container. Now, that sounds like a lot of buzzwords, right? Well, it's really not, but from the outside looking in, it sure seems like it. So throughout this chapter, we're going to provide you with hard explanations of these concepts. That way that you know what the Spring Framework actually does and why you should use the Spring Framework. A large amount of this course will actually cover how to use the Spring IOC container to perform dependency injection. This chapter lays the groundwork for when we move into those later lessons that teach us how to work with Spring to perform dependency injection. Throughout this chapter, we will investigate Spring's approach to dependency injection as well as dependency injection in general. After we have learned about these approaches, we will compare and contrast them to highlight the benefits provided by Spring's approach to dependency injection. Now there's a few objectives we have for this chapter. We want you to walk away knowing what dependency injection is. We also want you to know how Spring approaches dependency injection. Another important concept is why you would use Spring for dependency injection. You shouldn't just use a third-party framework for no reason at all. So we want you to understand the benefits it's going to provide to you. And then for those of you who like code, our last bullet point really clarifies it. Dependency injection, and we call the clarify method on it. We really want to add some clarity to what can be an often cloudy term. So there's a number of important notes you need to know for this lesson. Often we will use dependency injection and inversion of control interchangeably. The concepts pretty much mean the same thing, so you'll hear those terms used pretty much in place of each other. The next thing you'll need to know is that we'll refer to manual dependency injection, and that's just referring to dependency injection without spring. You'll learn that dependency injection is a pattern, and you actually don't need spring to apply that pattern but you'll see that Spring does provide some really good benefits when using the dependency injection pattern. And the one last point I really can't stress enough. During this chapter, it's really important to pay attention to what we are doing and why we are doing it, instead of how we are doing things. In other words, pay attention to the overarching concepts in each lesson, instead of looking at the details of the source code. These lessons will focus on what the Spring Framework does for you and why you would use it. Don't worry about getting caught up in the details of the code. We will dedicate plenty of time to learning how to use the framework in later lessons.